This is a quick introduction to when and why you need absolute value with radicals. We know that the square root of 9 is 3. This is because 3 times 3 equals 9. However, we often think of this as the square root of 3 squared and that this squared cancels out with this square root. This isn't entirely true because let's look at the square root of negative 3 squared. Now if those just canceled out, we would get our answer of negative 3. However, this is the square root of 9 because this squared part happens first. So what we really have is the answer of 3. So if I were to do this, what I would really want is the absolute value of 3, which is just 3. The rule or pattern that we notice is when we have an even index, remember that this implies a 2 here, and an even exponent, we know that this even exponent inside ensures that the whole radicand become positive first before applying the radical, and therefore we always need to take the absolute value. Therefore, if we're taking the square root of x squared, even though in our head we may think it's x, it's really the absolute value of x. So more generally, if we have an even index and an even exponent inside, and it results in an odd exponent, then we put absolute value bars around the x. This rule gets more complicated, but this is a good basic rule to follow. The reason why we only need these if our exponent on the outside is odd is that if we had an even exponent, we already would be ensuring that we have a positive answer. But if we have an odd exponent, we could end up with a negative outside. So when we take the square root of x squared, the result is the absolute value of x. When we take the square root of x to the fourth, the result is just x squared, because this squared already ensures our positive answer. When we have the square root of x to the sixth, we get x to the third. Well, we had even, even, odd, so therefore we do need our absolute value bars. The square root of x to the eighth, you guessed it, is just x to the fourth. If we looked with numbers, we would know that the answer to this is the square root of 16, which is 4. The answer to this is also the square root of 16, which is 4. The answer to this is the square root of 64, which is 8. And the answer to this is also the square root of 64, which is 8. Notice that they're all positive. So really, we took the absolute value of each of our answers, even if there was a negative to start. We only write the absolute value bars if we're dealing with a variable, not a number. For example, we would write positive 8 instead of the absolute value of negative 8, if that were the case. Here's one final example. The square root of 36 is 6. That's already positive. If we had a negative, we would have an imaginary solution. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. That squared already ensures that we have a positive number. The square root of y to the sixth is y to the third, so that needs to go in absolute values. You can put the dot here for multiplication if you want. And the square root of z to the tenth is z to the fifth. That also needs to go in absolute values, so that is our simplified expression.